when I first touched a rock, that was my wedding. I guess I kind of started out as a, as a ranch kid growing up on a ranch in Jackson Hole with an uncluttered, clear view of the Tetons on a thousand acre ranch. Then my dad died and my mom sold the ranch. You know, it's hard to, to go from country to city. For me, that was not an easy move. Eventually, I had to get an education. I went to the University of Wyoming in Laramie, and while I was in college, the Audi Club taught me how to climb. It's like, wow, there's the rock. That's the rock I've been looking at all these years and didn't even know what it was. Finally, I actually touched it, and yeah, it was a rock. It's like every, every rock has a personality. Every rock has a personality. That was my lead into climbing, it was the, uh, the ad adventure, the mystique, the calling, the, you know, it's like, wow, there's, a, there's a, a mountain out there. It's like, wow, I'm married to a rock. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> Everybody got everything? Yeah. Watch your head. I think about Maurice and the climbs that he's done. 1962, the year I was born, he climbed the Naked Edge in El Dorado with Leighton Core, one of the greats of American climbing. So there's this connection one generation to the next. And so having climbed with Maurice and Leighton Core and Fred Becky and Pat Callis, these guys that have done remarkable things, that knowledge is passed on to me. And now it's my turn to take that knowledge and pass it on to climbers that are 23 years younger than I am. Hang your pack up, because in a place like this, People bring their dogs. Dogs like to pee on packs. We're here for the same goal. We want to go out and have fun and challenge ourselves. My uh, initial connection to Maurice wasn't through climbing here in Montana where we both live, but it was through the, the carabiners. And so Maurice would tap Emmy Horn into his carabiners. My mentor, Mug Stump, be like, oh wow, we found it, Emmy Horn Beaner, who was the fabled first ascensionist of the Naked Edge. And I switched it out with one of my carabiners and it became sort of this, this talisman of, of good luck. Good job. Perfect. All right, Maurice. <laughs> it's good to see you out here. It was inspiring on my end, but see someone that's 22 years older than I am still crushing so gives me motivation and incentive to get out here I don't know about crushing but oh you're crushing <laughs> Maurice has been climbing for 60 years and so it's great to see this passion for climbing and still out there still pursuing it Burn the incense. Okay. We're ready. 
yeah, I'm a sensitive person. You know, I love the animals and uh, the ranch. And I thought I'd turn that thing off. That thing's really ruining him and everything. Okay. Hi, Roy. Hey, Maurice, are you ready? Well, yeah, I guess. All right, let's go. Go where? Live it. Well, I'm busy, Roy. <laughs> I don't mean today. Well, man, it looks like it might rain or something. No, it is raining. I'm just sitting here. It's not it's no good today. We might have to read poetry or something. called a uh, smooth exterior. When I was in my 20s, I realized the meaning of the word small. Mom had sold the ranch five years earlier. I felt trapped. I would become a city dweller. I knew then I would never see country again. I would never feel my heart again. The ranch of my youth was torn away from me. There was nothing I could do about that. Ever since then, I've always wanted to go back to the country, but so far I haven't made it. I knew if I was going to survive, I would have to develop a smooth exterior. I would have to suck in my horns, which I did, and so far I have kept them sucked in. I'm old now and sometimes I think about those sucked horns and maybe, just maybe, I ought to release my horns once in a while just to get the feeling back. What would that feel like to release my horns now? This used to be our ranch right here. All this on the right hand side. This is a, now it's a country club. <clears throat> yeah, okay, we're in the cemetery right now. <clears throat> we'll go look at some graves. There's my dad. And there's my mom. There's my brother. Doesn't look like there's much space left for me. <laughs> this is uh, the place where I grew up, it was like uh, freedom it was wonderful. It was hard to leave this place. This is a special, very special place. Special land here. I suppose I could have stayed till the sheriff came along and dragged me away, but I don't know, I didn't feel like that was the right thing to do. <laughs> Probably the last time I was here might have been 20 years ago, before this happened. It's turned into a strange place. It's not my place anymore. It's like I'm not part of this family. I don't know what family I am a part of.
I didn't want to come here. I always wanted to get back to the country, but I never made it. Climbing was kind of a replacement for being a ranch kid. It's my connection to the outdoors, no, I'm just kind of a city dweller and housebound, so I need every excuse I can get to go out and breathe some fresh air and be outdoors. Thank goodness I've found climbing. You know, it's been a huge part of me my whole life. I don't know what I'll do when I get to the point where I can't climb anymore.